Hurricane Matthew took aim at Hilton Head Island, a barrier island off the coast of South Carolina, starting the evening of Friday, October 7, 2016. The winds began to pick up speed. The advancing storm surge pushed into low-lying areas. Overnight, we would set two records. Most rainfall ever and highest high tides ever. Fortunately, few people actually witnessed this. I was hunkered down with some 600 first responders representing over 20 different agencies. We had traveled about 30 miles inland and taken over the campus of our regional university. This was base camp. Many of our residents had evacuated well in advance and waited wearily in motel rooms, having rented whatever they could find. These folks just wanted to come home. I get that. My wife made it clear to me in a previous evacuation. Four kids and a dog in a motel room? <laughs> Ain't no vacation, honey. <laughs> People prayed this storm would just leave us alone. Did not happen. As Saturday dawned, a question on top of mind was how many people died? Amazingly, none. It would take several days for search and rescue teams to confirm that not one person died on our island. It was a miracle. At 6 a.m. Saturday, the eye of the storm was 20 miles off our coast. With an eye wall 40 miles across, this means the strongest winds, which are along that wall, were directly over our beaches, chewing them up and raging at property and vegetation. We will never know how many trees were downed. They littered roads, yards, parking lots, and lay splintered across buildings. Just picking up the trees will cost us more than $40 million. By 9 a.m., I was part of an advance team that reached the island. As we came down those bridges, I was stunned. Debris was everywhere. The roads were deserted of vehicles. Beyond the absence of human activity, there were no bugs. There were no birds chirping. It was eerie. Our intent had been to see if we could even make it to the island and having done so, to start relaying what we were seeing back to base camp, where re-entry teams were being assembled to push their way to the hospital, fire stations, and other critical facilities. We struggled to get around. What with debris blocking roads, power lines down, flooded streets. We could not make it to the beaches, nor to almost any of our residential neighborhoods. At the end of that effort, I realized I only took three photographs. Later, as I thought about that, I recalled old World War II movies where they incorporate scenes of actual battle footage. The military understands the importance of documentation and the value of sharing that with the public. Now, we have always known that a hurricane might come. We have planned and prepared for this, but photos, videos, to the extent the topic came up, 
It was in terms of documentation needed for federal reimbursement claims. I wondered, can we use modern technology to improve our performance while also sharing accurate and timely data with our citizens, our customers? Our first responders can now simultaneously be the documenters. Think of dash cams, helmet cams, mounted 360 view cameras. Imagine how much better prepared those re-entry teams might have been if I and that advanced team had been equipped to capture and stream video back to base camp. While such cameras would be helpful, we still need systems that will capture data from areas we could not even reach. Later Saturday, I took a ride on a Coast Guard helicopter. As we came across the sound and over the beaches of Hilton Head Island, I was relieved. Roofs were mostly intact. Siding had not been stripped from buildings. Foundations had not been undermined. This is not to say there was no damage. Some of those boats were people's homes. Some small charter companies depended on some of those boats. While aboard that helicopter, I finally started taking some pictures. After some of them were posted online, there was a clamor for access to the rest of those images. Damaged or not, people just wanted to see their homes. One resident told me that he saw that his roof was damaged and was able to make arrangements for repairs days before even being allowed back on the island. Our resorts and businesses began to plan for their recovery while still far away. These images, and of course others, settled nerves and spurred people to action. We need more of this. We need to quickly capture data from the entire impacted area. It took me three day, two days to reach my own home. Some of our first responders worked days more without seeing theirs. Imagine the impact on their spirits if, while still out in the field, we could have shared images of their homes with them. Saturday, the call started coming in to our emergency dispatchers, urging us to check on family and friends, often the elderly, who had stayed behind and not been heard from. You cannot fathom the difficulty with which those dispatchers had to give the answer. I'm sorry, we have no way to get to them. Imagine drones with infrared technology or a communication system that would have enabled us to do welfare checks. Could such drones serve as a force multiplier, allowing search and rescue teams to cover more ground and thus save lives in a larger disaster? Think about those in need of food, water, and medicine. Can the drone delivery techniques currently being tested by industry be adapted to these situations? As those, first res as those re entry teams pushed onto the island, those hundreds of first responders that had sheltered at base camp flowed in behind them and went to work. But pick any street. How many times 
Did individual crews travel that same road to do reconnaissance? Can we capture photos and videos in a first pass and share it with everyone? Residents who ignored the evacuation order began posting photos and commentary on Saturday. As staff attempted to capture and share the best of these images, they struggled to figure out what was being depicted. Points of reference were often non-existent. Geographic Information Systems, GIS, can be a key component to accomplishing this vision. GIS can capture massive amounts of data and tie it to a specific location. Photos, videos, social commentary, field notes, all can be captured from whatever sources, enabling us to create a live, interactive map for the use and benefit of our first responders and the public. Obviously, we can tap into technologies that already exist. However, in order to truly transform how our communities respond to a disaster, we will need tools and systems not yet created. If we can speed the restoration of basic services and get people back in their homes sooner, it can pay long-term dividends for all of our communities. So, I am calling on all of us to come together in our communities to urge industry and government to reimagine the way we, re we respond to a disaster, keep the public informed, and come back faster and stronger. <laughs>